Hi, my name is Jim Jasinski. I'm with Ohio State University, the Department of Extension, the Integrated Pest Management Program. And today I'm standing at the Western Ag Research Station in South Charleston, trying to talk to you about how to put out traps for key lepidoptera or pests of sweet corn and field corn. So let's get started. What are we gonna need uh, to put these traps out? Well, we're gonna need the trap itself, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. All these traps get uh, held up by these metal posts that could be four, five, or six foot. Uh, just depends on the positioning of the trap uh, in the field. We might need something like these PVC pieces to help suspend the trap away from uh, the post so that it doesn't bang up against um, the post itself. To put these in the ground, you can either use a small three to five pound uh, hammer or a small sledge, depends on how uh, tough the ground is where you're working. The principle behind how all these traps function is the same. These are pheromone traps. And so we put pheromones in here or small pieces of rubber that smell like the female of the species that we're interested in trapping. That attracts the males, the males come into the trap and then they get stuck in the trap and we come by once a week or sometimes more often and count how many insects are in the trap and that gives us an idea of the activity or the, uh, the amount of potential damage uh, to that crop uh, in that area. When you purchase these traps, you also are going to be purchasing the pheromone lures. And so they come in a variety of shapes and kinds. They're all labeled. Um, some of them last for two weeks, some of them last for a month. And so you do need to rotate those out throughout the season to keep those fresh. What's interesting about these two traps here, the Western Bean Cutworm and the Fall Army Worm, is they're what's called a bucket style trap or a unit trap. In addition to having the pheromone, which is put in this little cage at the top of the trap but in addition to just attracting these insects to the trap we have to make sure they don't escape and so in the bottom of these we put what's called a kill strip which is a vapor strip that once the moths get in here uh, they die quickly if we don't put that kill strip in the moths flutter around they bang against the side of the trap they knock all those identifying scales off and makes it really tough for us to figure out what insects we have in the trap. So the, the kill strip is very important and I'm gonna show you later on how to put that in the bottom here and how to change it. In this segment, we're gonna talk about final assembly of the bucket style trap. You can see the three pieces here, the bottom of the bucket, the middle part of the body, and then the canopy that covers the trap. When they're all put together, they look something like this. The bottom and the middle snap off like this for easy access to the contents below. And then up top here is where the pheromone basket goes. So this is what the pheromone basket looks like that you get uh, from the uh, distributor. And what I like to do is I like to take and put about a half inch or three quarter inch strip of duct tape along the bottom so that these uh, skinnier lures that you can get for fall army worm do not fall out. So what we do now is we take the top, we pop the top of this off, we take our lure, we pop it inside the basket, we put the top back on, and then we put the basket right in here, and that part is done. Pretty straightforward. So let's set that aside for a minute, and let's talk about the bottom part. Now the bottom part is where we're gonna put the kill strip. The kill strip's function, again, is to kill those moths and insects that are in here so they don't bang around and knock all the identifying scales off of each other. So what I've done is I've taken about an eighth of an inch drill bit and I've drilled a hole about three quarters of an inch below the lip right here. And I've also put three drainage holes in the bottom. So if any water gets in here, it drains out and it doesn't ruin the specimens. Now, in terms of attaching the kill strip, what I recommend is, is a piece of wire um, or even a twist tie works just fine. Fold it in half. Um, fish it through the hole right here, okay? And then just make a little bit of a makeshift knot here at the back end of this twist tie. Pull it all the way through until it stops. And so you kind of get this configuration. Now, there's a couple different ways to use um, these clips, either an alligator clip or a paper clip or a small binder clip to actually hold the kill strip. I like the binder clip myself. All you need to do is then take this loose end of the twist tie, fish it through one side, of this uh, binder clip wrapped around a couple times, about an inch or so down from the top um, of the trap, okay? Something like that. 
Now we want to go ahead and attach the kill strip. The kill strip's good for about eight weeks or about two months. So um, after, after two months, you want to go ahead and change it out. Now we don't want to handle this barehanded, so we want to have our gloves on at this point in time. And uh, here is the package right here, the kill strip. I just cut the edge with scissors. You can use a knife, doesn't really matter. And then what I would do is I'd grab this kill strip. I'd come back over here, I'd open up the binder clip, and I would just stick it right in there, just like that, okay? So, there's no magic as far as how far up or down it has to be, but we do not want it sitting on the bottom of the trap in case those holes get plugged and water comes up into it, shortens the life of the lure. So now that we're all done with this, we put the top back on. One last point about the trap that's gonna make it easier when you go to check it is to take a big thick marker and write on the side the initials of the insect that you're trapping for. FAW for fall armyworm, WBC for western bean cutworm. Whatever the insect is, put the initials on here and that'll help you remember what trap you have in the field at that location. This trap off to my right is a Heliothus trap and it's good for catching European corn borer or corn earworm. As you can see, the lure hangs down from the bottom of the trap um, that's what attracts the insects to it. They come up through the bottom, they spiral through the cone and get trapped up in the top part uh, here. So one thing to know about this trap that's important is that we want to make sure the lure does not hang down beneath the bottom of the trap. If it does, it's going to lessen the number of moths that we catch. So if you see the uh, lure kind of hanging down, and in this example, it is hanging down a couple inches. We want to make sure that it's nice and straight across the bottom of the trap. Maybe tie a little knot in it to kind of keep it straight. You can always replace that uh, piece of elastic with a wire, and that way it won't sag over time. What else is very important is that you secure the front of the trap with this um, band and the stake. That keeps the trap from swinging back and forth. When we go to empty this trap, all we do is undo this strap behind here. We pull this Velcro off and then there's an inverted mesh that we flip out and dump all the insects into a, a plastic bag to take them back to count. Now what we recommend you think about doing is buying an extra top so that you just take this top and you pull it off, put the fresh top back on, take that old top with the insects, throw it into the freezer for a few minutes, kill all those insects, and then you can count them easily. Moving on to this trap here, this is called the heart stack trap. Again, for trapping corn earworm. It's a little bit larger and a little more cumbersome than the Heliothus trap, but it's a little bit more sensitive and so it picks up moths at a little bit lower density. Again, here the lure is right across this bar, so it's in a good secure position. Don't have to worry about that getting misplaced. Just have to remember to replace the lure every uh, couple of weeks. The moths get caught in the bottom, spiral up, and they end up here in the top. And so to get the moths out, we're gonna have to take these little secure clips and these bands off of here, pull the trap down, and count the moths in there. Uh, again, one thing we wanna think about doing is buying a spare top. We pull that top off with all the insects, we replace it with a fresh top, then we can take that top, put it in the freezer for a couple of minutes, let those moths die, and then count those a little bit easier. Typically, for these traps, we will check them once a week. Uh, when, it, when it's getting to be silking time or a little bit closer to silking, we want to check the corn earworm trap, no matter if it's this style or this style, um, about two or three times a week because those moths, moth flights um, really do just come in quite quickly and the life cycle of those can start up within about two days after the eggs have been laid. So it's really important for us to check that trap a lot more frequently than this trap right here, these traps right here. Now that I've gone and explained most of the function of these traps and, and how they work, let's talk about where to place them. So all of these traps should not be placed this close together. This is just so we can do uh, the video all in one spot. Typically, you want to place the traps about anywhere from 50 to 100 feet apart along the edge of a, of a cornfield, whether it be sweet corn or field corn. Um, with these two traps, the western bee cutworm and the um, fall armyworm, they can be replaced right in the field, right in the row. So what happens is as time goes on and these plants grow up, we can just snap a few of those plants off and then what you'll have left is just a, a space where this trap is occupied in the field. So you don't have to worry about it getting knocked over by the growing corn. One thing that I do recommend that you do is get some flagging tape and then wrap some flagging tape around these traps so that you know where they're at 
and also uh, anyone who's doing any maintenance, any mowing, any uh, fertility, whatnot, they know they're there and don't run the traps over. The same can be said for uh, this corn board trap to put some flagging on it. Uh, this trap here is normally, you know, easy enough to see, but even though it's huge, uh, I would still put some flagging tape on it. This trap is actually quite expensive. It's four or $500 for the trap and one or $200 for the top. So you really don't want anything to run into this and damage it. So when do we want to think about putting these traps out? Okay, this is the first week of June. This is kind of when all four of these insects are becoming active or they might be migrating into Ohio. So depending upon what you're looking for and what crop you're monitoring, you probably wanna get these out somewhere toward the end of May to that first week of June. Check them every week and then see what the populations are doing. Um, we have a uh, pest trapping network at Ohio State where we have locations around the state that report all of these insects. And so we try to provide that information to you so you can use that in your management practices as well. So I think that's it in terms of how to put the traps up, how the traps function, when to check them, uh, those kinds of basic things. If there's any other questions you have, please feel free to give me a call.